Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation. Um, let me see. Yeah. Oh, no. This. This is our building, um, which is terrible to pronounce in English. Sorry for that, Lucas. But it's Pakhuis des Weiger. It's a platform in the city of Amsterdam uh, that over the last 10 years has been redeveloped by my director, Egbert Franse, who will be uh, joining the panel later, into a platform for the creative industries, but mostly for uh, collaborative city making or social innovation in urban development. Uh, this is me. <laughs> we are located on the waterfront in the city of Amsterdam. And what we mainly do is we make programs. We organize events such as this one. Uh, we do a lot. Over the past year, we've organized 538 events in, uh, in the city of Amsterdam, all focused on uh, uh, innovative urban development or the creative industries or the role of creatives in, in urban development, focusing on the circular economy, on collaborative area development, focusing on business models for independently working artists, uh, focusing on new de democratic issues or new democracy, a lot of topics. Uh, today our uh, online and offline community has grown over 88,000 uh, annual visitors of our platform and members of our community, which for us is very important because we don't believe in uh, the distance between uh, speakers and the audience. We really believe that if you're a member of our platform, you may also be a speaker in the next event. And so there is a very lo low threshold uh, for being a member of our platform. Um, and this is because we are focused mostly on what we, ha what we started to call uh, city makers. Uh, those are the pioneering individuals that start up uh, great and innovative uh, initiatives to make uh, their cities more innovative, more resilient, more uh, creative or more inclusive, uh, livable whatsoever. And we try to give them a platform and uh, invite other people uh, to join, to listen, to learn from their practices. Uh, for the past two years, I have been working on a platform called New Europe Cities in Transition, which has been an extension of what we started to call New Amsterdam City in Transition, connecting uh, a lot of cities uh, throughout Europe on an online platform, but also through offline activities, um, trying to tell the stories of those city makers in, uh, in European capital cities, um, to share the, and, and learn, share the practices and learn from the experiences in, uh, in different meetings. And only two weeks ago, we've been organizing the City Makers Summit. Uh, and it's great to know that, uh, in particular, the Central European City Makers, uh, including Martin Berry, were also uh, presented there. Um, but we have organized a four-day event where we, uh, where we connected 600 city makers from uh, a total of 150 cities in the city of Amps uh, uh, all over Europe to come to the city of Amsterdam. And this was in particular because we knew that there, at the moment there was an informal ministerial conference happening uh, for the agreement of the, the urban agenda for the European Union, uh, included in, in what was called the Pact of Amsterdam. And we knew this already for two years. So to collaboratively with all the city makers throughout Europe, we had been working uh, on a sort of statement which was called the city makers agenda in our magazine. Um, that we were able to present at the, uh, at the minister's conference to uh, invite them to join the city makers in, uh, in enhancing their social innovation and engage in a more socially innovative uh, city making processes. So here, I'm, uh, here I am uh, representing the city makers uh, together with Amalia Zeppu from the city of Athens, who is the vice mayor for civil society, which was a great collaboration. Um, in particular, focusing on the, on the issue that we are addressing today, uh, the inclusion of refugees and migrants. Um, one part of the urban agenda for the European Union is the inclusion of refugees and migrants. And this uh, priority theme is, is addressed actually by the city of Amsterdam. And this is uh, our mayor who on the 21st of April has invited uh, the 28 capital mayors of, uh, of the European Union to talk in particular about this subject. And uh, during the evening hours, we invited both him and uh, the mayor of Athens, uh, Mr. Kaminis, to join in uh, one of our events, which was called the Mayor's Dialogue, to talk to city makers about how uh, bottom-up, uh, small-scale initiatives could actually cooperate with city mayors to um, allow for a more sustainable inclusion of refugees and migrants. And one of the things um, that we found very interesting is that of it's not the political unwill of most mayors to work together with civil society to enhance this, but in our case, um, oh, this is what I'm saying, there's a lot of grassroots initiatives that are trying to uh, formulate responses to, uh, to the refugee crisis at the moment. And what we've learned from our mayor, for example, is that in the city of Amsterdam for refugee shelter, 
um, the national government is actually forcing upon the city of Amsterdam to have a well-working business model, uh, including 2,500 migrants or uh, newcomers in the city of Amsterdam into what was before uh, our prison, which doesn't really look inviting, if you ask me. Um, and our mayor told us that he would love to have uh, um, a more small-scale and resilient and more sustainable solution coming from city makers, but he feels restricted by his national government. So this is something I think that we face a lot in, uh, in cities today. So that was how um, the national government wants to give refugees a shelter in, uh, in the city of Amsterdam. So let me quickly take you along some of the smaller scale bottom-up initiatives, which we already seen before, the wonderful uh, Refugees Welcome Initiative and all the other ones that were presented. This is the initiative of HOST in the city of Amsterdam, which is a group of residents from the Eastern District that um, transformed an old school into uh, a residential place for, re for refugees from Syria that just came to Amsterdam. And uh, they've crowdfunded the entire project to be able to, to host uh, 40 refugees within their neighborhood. They get language classes, they uh, cook together, they form uh, long-lasting friendships, which is a very sustainable solution. Another option, also an old school, um, transformed into a creative hub for uh, the many artistic refugees that are coming from Syria, Lebanon, Eritrea today. And in this uh, creative hub, they work side to side to artists from the city of Amsterdam, also allowing for an actual integration in society. And the idea is that this creative hub will be uh, self-supportive or self-run self by the refugees within a couple of months. Uh, in our own venue, uh, the last couple of months, we've organized a, meet, uh, a weekly, no, I'm sorry, a monthly dinner, Eat to Meet, where new coming Amsterdamers would be connected to their professional peers uh, over dinner, because this is one of the greatest uh, moments to meet, and also the music was provided by a group of former refugees. Um, this is a good example from the city of Vienna, for example, that's also on our platform, which is called the Machtas Hotel, maybe some of you may know it. This is a hotel where tourists are uh, meeting uh, refugees that work in the hotel and actually get professional hotel train training and uh, allowing them for integration into the labor market in the future. And this at the moment, uh, as uh, Lucas already said, my director is at this moment the cultural intendant for the arts and design program uh, under the presidency of the European Union that's in Amsterdam right now. And one of the things that we have developed is Fab City which is a maker space where experimentation takes place of urban innovators, creating a more resilient city, uh, allowing for small-scale tiny houses, for example, or a 3D printer that at the moment is printing a bridge from metal or uh, all sorts of urban innovations. But this also allows for an excellent example where small-scale housing is developed. And because of the showcase now today, luckily, the national government is talking to the people who constructed these kinds of buildings to see if this could provide uh, shelter for refugees. And this would be excellent, of course, because it's more livable than the prison I was showing before, but also because uh, these are um, buildings that could move into vacant lots in the city and that are also almost autarkic, so they, they would have solar panels on the roof, they would be uh, uh, working with grey water systems, so this would be uh, allowing for innovation in many ways, uh, but also an opportunity for migrants or refugees to have a, a, a more livable shelter. Um, and as I said, there is a, a thousands of these sorts of initiatives throughout Europe that we uh, have encountered the last couple of years, not only about refugees and migrants, but also a lot of them uh, trying to in, in engage them into societies. Um, and I've brought, we've brought a couple of the magazines, but it's also <laughs> available online. One of the things that we've presented to the, to the ministers of the European Union is, amongst others, uh, an article about these small-scale initiatives in, uh, in different cities throughout Europe. So I invite you all to read this. Um, and of course, as was being said a couple of times today, we don't believe that the solutions for the refugee crisis can only be coming fr come from bottom-up. Uh, it should be actually in collaboration with many stakeholders in the city. We, me, we may provide a place for those city makers to meet with all the different layers into uh, society. And this is maybe a good example because the municipality of Amsterdam uh, did sign an ag agreement uh, last week or two weeks ago, I think, 
where uh, over 40 big companies in the, in the city of Amsterdam, but also uh, civil society organizations and knowledge institutions collaborate in uh, providing training for refugees and actually allowing them to enter the labor market. So I think this is something we can be very proud of and which could be an example for other cities uh, throughout Europe. Um, because this is one of the things that we strongly believe in, innovation in the city doesn't come from uh, only either one of these directions, but it's very important to think of social innovation where uh, a quadruple helix of different uh, stakeholders, corporates, knowledge institutions, civil, so uh, civil society organizations and uh, the local municipality collaborate. So thank you. This is it for now.